Welcome to another Linley's Garden Railway video. Hi, I'm Warren Brand and today's video will focus on the block section control modules which I've designed for the Linley's Garden Railway. This module is one of a range of units all working together to form the full DLC system or decentralised logic control system that I've developed. The block section controller has five main functions. These are track occupancy detection, acceleration and decelerations of trains in the block, local signalling, partnership working with other blocks and control modules, and dealing with the commands from the signal box input switches. All the electronic circuitry is housed in a standardised module frame. This is simply a piece of clear acrylic folded to a form a C cross-section shape and drilled to support the circuit boards and cable ties as well as holes to give access from the front edge. Each of the module elements is mounted on the back of the space frame with stainless steel M4 bolts I mostly use stainless steel fixings outdoors to save any issues with corrosion. The block section controller then has two main elements, the circuit board and the track power regulator. The control board has a reprogrammable processor at the heart of the unit and this runs all the local logic for the block section, dealing with most of the inputs and outputs needed to regulate the passing of a train through the block. Along the top and bottom edges of the main circuit board are rows of terminal connectors which enable links to be made to all the inputs and outputs. Above the control board there's a set of relays and these are logic linked to the control board. These relays switch in and out segments of a resistor array right at the top of the module unit. So that's the basic makeup of the whole module. Woodgate Crescent Station area has four block section control modules. In this set of sequences, which I filmed last year, three of the modules are managing the movement of the train as it enters the station area through to as it leaves. In this second example, the train decelerates to stop at the station, then waits under the stop, pause, go feature, and then accelerates away to go up the line. I'm not assuming anyone would be interested in recreating the module design which I've developed, as I'm sure anyone else would have their own angle on specification, design approach or construction, but for general interest, here we go. The main circuit board is fabricated on standard copper strip board, with the strips aligned vertically. The connector blocks then pick up on the top and bottom edges easily. In the centre area is a 40-pin reprogrammable pick chip. I use a readily available series of chips from the Pickaxe company. Although the chips are standard commercial units, these ones have the Pickaxe bootstrap preloaded, so I can very easily program the chips using a laptop connected via USB to the board through a hole in the front of the module frame. More about that at another time, this could be a whole series of videos. 
The main input and output connections to the core chip are made by surface jumper wires of various colours. Inputs come from other modules, the control inputs from the mimic panel and of course the track sensors to monitor the block occupancy. I did a full video about the track sensors last year and a link to that is included in the description below. An electronics connoisseur would quite rightly point out that the control board would be best formed as a PCB, perhaps double-sided, instead of this clumsy use of stripboard. This is so true, but I'm still developing the concept, so have not yet committed to any kind of PCB production. Mounted above the main circuit board is a combination of a relay block and a resistor array. The track power is regulated by increasing or decreasing resistance in the feed circuit to the track. With no resistance included, the full 22 volt supply is applied to the track, and so the trains on the line will effectively be able to travel at their full speed. By adding in some resistance to the track feed, the voltage available at the track is reduced and so the train will travel more slowly. This is a very old type of technology. An electrical expert would obviously point out that this blunt force way to regulate power to the trains dates back to the 1880s approach to managing train speed regulation in electric trains and trams. In those days, they used resistor banks mounted underneath the vehicle and wastefully dissipated energy as heat and used clunky notching switches under the driver's rotary lever in the cab. The use of PWM or pulse width modulation is far more effective, or at least the use of non-resistive voltage control, but playing a pun here, I'm working step by step in developing designs and I can upgrade my modules in due course. So at the top of the module is a stack of resistor units. I've made these using nichrome wire wound round knot strips of acrylic. I've included some spacing so I can attach connection links and ensure sufficient cooling air can circulate around the wires. The stack of resistor units are wired in series. The maximum resistance then is achieved across the full end-to-end -end of the stack. There are several midpoint tap-off tabs along the edges of the windings so that I can select the best resistance values for each switched level. Then the various levels of resistance are achieved by switching in and out some of the windings. This is done by using the relays mounted just below. The relay block is a standard four-channel SPDT relay unit commonly used with Arduino and other boards for project development. The switch side of the relays connect to various points along the resistor array and by changing the combination of relay ons and offs, a ramping up of resistance or a decreasing of resistance can be achieved. This then simply causes the train in the block section to decelerate or accelerate as the track power is changed. I use a simple 4-bit connection between the circuit board and the relay block and this gives me quite a wide range of switching configurations. In the program running in the module's current version, I have set up an acceleration sequence which has 8 stages of resistance reduction and this produces a reasonably realistic, smooth and progressive increase in speed. Back to the main control board again, I'll conclude this episode by describing the basics behind how the program running on the PIC chip works. The program is currently in its third major development cycle. It has been an ongoing development project for over six years, and it's not finished yet. Currently, there are hundreds of lines of code in the program, but broken down into chunks or subroutines. The main routine rapidly calls a set of subroutines, which themselves have certain jobs to do. 
One subroutine, for example, is responsible for setting the correct aspects of the signal lights, depending on the conditions stored in memory. Another subroutine controls the outputs to the relay block to manage the train speed. Maybe I'll go into more details in a later video if you're interested. If so, please let me know in the comments below. My DLC system is developing slowly, but I'm getting there. I'm making improvements to the way it works when I find something that I can do better. Anyway, I hope you found this video interesting and that you now understand a little more about how the trains are controlled automatically going around Lindley's Garden Railway. In later videos, I'll focus on other modules and features of the DLC system that I've developed, so check back when you can. Thanks for watching and bye for now.